among the 10 million Americans who have drinking problems. 30 years ago, there was a little known and now hardly remembered puppet program on TV here in Washington. Just a local show, five minutes long as I recall. The brainchild of a high school student, that program was called Sam and Friends. Doesn't ring a bell, eh? Well, maybe you know the kid who created it. He's going on to do some stuff with some puppets he calls the Muppets. Jim Henson began with Sam and Friends, which is why we call our story Larry Lizard and Friends. Who knows, maybe someday someone will remember this is how Tommy Duran began. Okay, welcome to Tommy's Super Puppet Show. My name is Larry G. Lizard and I'm your host today. Uh, we have a spectacular show planned for you and I hope you really enjoy it. First of all, I've been doing this since four, um, maybe before then. But as far as I can remember, I was four years old because I remember when I watched The Muppets, I always wanted to know how this worked and how come I never saw a person walking down the street that was purple. You know, I always wanted to know they're, they're black people, they're white people, they're all kinds of people, but they're no purple people. And um, I figured out they were puppets. When Tommy Duran was four, his puppets were little more than playmates for an only child. But at the ripe old age of 18, he's a veteran performer. For as the years went by, he developed his skill, his appreciation of this art form, and quite a menagerie of fuzzy friends. Um, some of these puppets are people I've met. Some of them are places I've been. Uh, I had a tree puppet. You know, it used to be, the, I got it from the idea of the tree that I had in my backyard. And the tree, after a while, got a little uh, character. It was, how can, like, sometimes people look at clouds and, um, and can see little people in it. I don't know how these people can do that, but nonetheless, I looked at a tree and I saw a puppet in it and made it into a puppet. However, that particular puppet was stolen, unfortunately, at a show. Um, a whole bag of my puppets was stolen. Man, I, wish, I hope the person that stole my puppets is watching this right now. <laughs> yeah, if you're watching, puppet napping is a crime especially when they're puppets that usually steal the show. From grandchildren to grandparents, from street performances to local TV programs, Tommy's talent has been winning applause from even the toughest audiences. One incident, I performed at a juvenile detention center, and when I went there, they said, we don't want to see any puppets, I'm 18 years old, I want to see no puppets, man, all that kind of stuff. And um, by the time it was over, Man, that was sharp. That was puppets, man. I like puppets, man. I, and then I've got people say, I say, puppets are uh, incredible. I, I really can't believe that you've done so much with the puppets, you know. I've gotten all kinds of different um, reactions. <laughs> reactions, but all kinds of money. Enough that Tommy sometimes has second thoughts about his plans to become a lawyer. It's kind of like whichever career becomes more profitable, that's the way I'm going to go. I'm going to stay on track as far as going into law school because that means a lot to me. But so far the puppets are doing pretty well and there's no reason to just pack them up and say, oh, okay, I'm gonna quit the puppets because, you know, um, I've gotta go into law school. There's no reason why I can't do both. His puppets do not live by Tommy alone. It's really a family affair. Aunts, uncles, cousins, neighbors, and friends all help him to put on the shows. And when the curtain goes up, he gets a hand, in fact, both of them, from his mom, Jean Duran. There are many times when I have to assist him backstage. I have to hand him his puppets, control the music or the sound. It has been good to him, that's all I can say, you know, because it has given him the experience of performing before people. He's a very outgoing person, so it has been, it's been a way to channel his energy. My mother is sometimes, sometimes she thinks stuff is, is so wonderful and so spectacular, when I just think it's terrible, and it turns out to be the act that makes me. And then other times, you know, it, it's, it's, it's like this, you know, sometimes it's, it, it, I just get all these ideas, and some of them are good, and some of them aren't, you know. You just have to feel through. And ironically, Tommy is feeling his way, following in the footsteps of the man who created these characters. 
Like Tommy, Jim Henson attended the district's Wilson High School. Both discovered playing with puppets could be profitable, and Henson, too, had modest beginnings. Long before Tommy had been born, or Miss Piggy for that matter, back in the 1950s, Henson was doing local TV commercials for a small coffee company. No, I'm not going to drink any more Wilkins Instant Coffee. No, he's not going to drink any more coffee. From that to this, to a multi-million dollar Muppet empire, young Tommy Doran admires Henson as a modern day master of this ancient art form. But um, he's not, he's not really an idol, but since he is, like, I think, the leader in my field, you know, I, I look to him for new ideas. He has a lot of great ideas. I think he's a genius as far as puppetry is concerned. Uh, um, but I think that his idea is not necessarily the only idea. There, there are many, there are millions of ideas out there. He has not learned everything there is to know about puppetry. The goal is to beat Johnny Carson to retirement. We gotta get on the Johnny Carson show. And, um, and my goal after that is to reach as many people as possible because puppets make me happy. And so far, they've made everybody else around me happy, so there's no reason not to spread a little more happiness in the world. So long as we're already in our That's Entertainment mode, in recent years, Washington has experienced a dramatic back uh, in very sharp focus. I looked right through it from the beginning to a, a different lofting on the fuselage and, a, and something like you see sitting here in, the, in this garage. And to see something in your mind like that and then uh, end up making it and, and uh, eventually getting it to look the way you want it is, is, a, is a great feeling. Of course, the ultimate high in experimental aviation is getting from the basement or the garage into the air. It took four years for Nolan Morris's plane to make the trip from drawing board to the Manassas flying field, where it almost looks uncomfortable in the company of Cessnas and Cherokees, assembly line aircraft not readily revealing which is the nose and which is the tail. It is in its flight that one senses